Hi, I'm Lori George with Let's Make Art, and today we are gonna be painting the Wetland Sunrise from the Kansas Wetlands box. Ooh. And we have Keenan today. Hello. Our camera. Hi, Keenan. Hi. And we have a special guest today, Ms. Sarah Cray. Hello. Sarah yes, Cray. I'm so Needs excited. No introduction. All we don't right. really do acrylic, so I'm super excited. Yay, this is fun. So we are going to talk about our supplies. Let's do that. Okay. So we're going to be using a few brushes today. We have a three quarter inch flat or classic wash flat brush. Then we have a, a half inch classic wash flat wash and a number eight round for some details. Okay. Then we also are going to be using a few texture tools. We have a scraper tool, which yours will look different if you got the Kansas Wetlands box. And then bamboo skewer. And if you have a palette knife, go ahead and get that out. We can use that too. And then one of the stars of this box are the Neo Color pastels from, um, they are water soluble and they are really cool. And I'm, Sarah hasn't used these yet. I haven't used them, I'm super excited. They're amazing. So, I know, I, I feel like I'm a salesman selling, I'm like, I'm making money off of this. So like, tell everybody really, about them. Yeah, Cause I just love them. <laughs> I'm like, guys, have you seen this? It's awesome. Keenan's like, I bought all of them already. Yeah. You guys are out of luck. Like, I have an 82 pack. <laughs> nice, 84. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, so we're gonna be using these. And then we're also gonna be using today some Liquitex heavy body paint, acrylic paint. Let's show that over here. And we've also got the colors out, laid out here on our glass palette. Great. We have titanium white, we have Hansa, yellow light Hansa, we have ultramarine blue, Napville crimson, Thalo green, and Mars black. So, beautiful colors. Yeah. That Thalo good. green is probably my favorite of the mix. Thalo green's nice. It's got a really good tinting uh, power. Okay, so here are our steps. First, we're gonna do a wash. Then we're going to, we're gonna draw out our landscape. Great. Then we're gonna do the sky and water base layers followed by working on our mid ground. Then we'll come back to the sky and water and add some more details. Then we'll do our grasses and tree line, followed by clouds and shadows, foreground grass, and then our finishing touches. Can't wait. Let's do it. Yay. Okay, so you're also gonna need some watercolor paper. I'm using the Let's Make Art watercolor paper and I use the textured side up. I'm also using a, a brush basin here to, you'll want something to be able to wash out your brushes. And then I have a paper towel or a shop towel. I like these nice and sturdy and I can use them again. These are actually super great. Yeah. I didn't I even them. think to use these. I can bring your roll. That would be great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And then if you've painted with me before, you know that I like to use a piece of paper to, as a brush board to paint extra paint that I have when I'm done painting on my project. I can wipe it off in here. So Sarah's going to do that as well. Okay. Wow. So let's get started. Did I miss anything? I don't know. I think we're good. We're right. good. So we're the good. first Let's thing we're going to do, Sarah, I feel like you'll be very familiar with this. We're going to do a wash. Oh, great. Okay. okay. <laughs> I can do that. Yes. Yeah, so go ahead. And... Like, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> with our three quarter inch uh, classic like flat wash brush, we are going to, let me just clarify. So acrylic people tend to call these a flat brush. A oh. Watercolor people tend to call them a wash. Interesting. But it's really, the, I think it's the same thing, unless I just Probably. don't know enough about brushes. I know nothing. <laughs> we'll just go with that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna make a light pink. So we're gonna grab a little bit of red and then some white. Do I need to get my brush wet first? Oh, you know what? Yes, but yours is already wet because we just washed it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So guys, you do wanna get your brush slightly dampened first um, before you I just paint. didn't know yeah. if that's if what you, you don't, do in okay. acrylic. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank okay, you for okay. asking that okay. question, Sarah. And I'm just, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do red and white and a tiny touch of yellow just to warm up this, um, maybe a little bit more. Okay, maybe a little more white. And then since it's a wash, we're gonna go ahead and add some water to it. I can do that. You can do that, yes. I feel really good about that. <laughs> and we're pretty, we're adding quite a bit of water here. Get a nice, a nice fluid consistency. And then we're just gonna cover our paper. We cover all the white on our paper. Do you have a hard time getting a lot of paint stuck up here? Every day. Oh, Sarah. okay, that's yes. normal. Okay, so cool. if you do get some gloppiness, what I tend to do is just take this and pull it straight oh, out. Okay, cool. So feel free to do that. Yes, when you mix with a brush, that happens a lot. You know, it's probably more correct to use a palette knife, but can't wait for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. No. No. We got a paint. <laughs> yes. Okay, so then we're just gonna put it on there. The whole thing? Yep. Okay. And you can keep adding water as you go. 
the we basically just want to cover the white and this is kind of be, going to be kind of that um, under layer that pops through here and there in our final painting. I like to take the intimidation away from a white piece of paper. Oh yeah, just cover that right up. Yes. Oh, I like that. So we've been doing that a lot with these wetland projects. Hold on, I get. I'm gonna move this sheet. While we're doing that, I just wanted to say, like, um, the Kansas Wetlands Box was inspired by the idea that there's beauty everywhere, no matter where we are, and that when we kind of keep our eyes open and look for it, that I think it just adds a lot to our day to day. And so I like to go to the wetlands near my house to just kind of relax and refresh. And I enjoy hearing all of the, there's lots of different birds there and um, animals. It's great. Have you ever been to the wetlands, Sarah? No. No? But now I want to go. Yeah. Well, you should you go. I will give you a tour. Let's That'd go. Great. <laughs> right now? Is now a good time? <laughs> Bye. <I> can, <laughs> Bye. Go. We gotta go. We gotta Tell go visit I'll this place. I'll take you to the wet, wetlands through this painting. Genius. Oh, Love it, Lori. Genius. I'm going to be transported right there. <laughs> Let's all take a trip. <laughs> can I use some of your color? Because I ran out. Okay, Please. Great. And feel free to mix more or add more water to just stretch it out. It doesn't have to be like a super thick, obviously with a okay, wash, okay we don't need it to be. Thin. Yep. Okay, cool. The main thing is to cover the white of the paper and then to have a little bit of something poking through as we go. Something under there. I feel so like free in my <laughs> movements. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So this, this is a wetland sunrise, and you might look at it and think it looks like a, like a sunset. And there's very few differences sometimes to be able to tell, so I, we've tried our best. But what I like about this particular piece is that, or what I tried to do is frame the light. So the light is kind of, kind of coming up, the sun's kind of coming up, hasn't quite peaked up above the horizon, like this mm. tree line. And so we're going to have a lot of desaturated colors kind of going on here because the light's not really hitting that. Mm, mm -hmm, but then mm -hmm. like the grass and the clouds will kind of hopefully frame the uh, I do love that area. moment when it's kind of like that dark and then the light is starting to come up, but the yes. sun hasn't hit everything yet. I yes. love that. Yes. Okay. Me too. Me yep. too. I, I, do you like sunrises better or sunsets? Honestly, sunrises. Sunrises. I think I'm the same. I yeah. feel like they're softer. But Keena's favorite color is sunset orange, yes, so he's struggling you know, with that I, question right I've now. I've heard that so right. many times that I just knew it before I even came to Let's Make Cry. <laughs> I'm glad he likes that. Okay, so we're going to let this dry, and then we're going to go ahead and add our uh, sketch. Okay. Okay, once your page is, is dry, we can go ahead and add our landscape. So this project does not have an outline because I wanted you to kind of, you know, take, take a little bit of risk and draw your own. Absolutely. It's not really a risk, right? Just take a little bit of your own liberty to add what you want. What I will suggest is that we have our horizon line about one third of the way down the page. Mm -hmm. And that what I'm going to do, I don't want it to be like a completely straight line across, but I'm going to just kind of put it like a little bit of an angle, okay? And then down here, I know that I want some water because there's lots of water at the wetlands. I really wanted mm -hmm. to highlight that in this project. So I'm going to have kind of some water right in the foreground here, kind of coming down at like an angle. And then maybe there's a little bit of water kind of showing right here. And kind of put in there. Mm. Would you like to do that too? Sarah? I would like to do that okay. too. And I drew that with the yellow neo color too, water soluble pastel, <laughs> because one cool thing is that as we go through the project, it's actually going to show through when we it uh, is mm -hmm. when like little bits of it because we're going to be scratching through okay cool and etching into it yes okay well i want to do a little extra more then <laughs> can i is that fine sure. if i'm like scribbly sarah this is your project you're right you do what you want <laughs> <laughs> you say that <laughs> watch all your videos <laughs> i have not <laughs> watch everyone <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny and creepy okay creepy. <laughs> all right so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to be putting in the sky. And we're going to start at the right-hand corner. Am I still using my three-quarter? You're three using quarter? your three-quarter inch okay. brush. And we're going to mix a desaturated blue, kind of like a gray blue to okay. start. And as we go th through, as we go in a diagonal pattern, we're going to be adding a little bit more white, a little bit more white, because it's going to get lighter towards the horizon. And then also down here, we'll add a little bit of red to make it a little bit Ooh, of a pretty, yeah. more purpley blue. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some blue, yep, if you're already there, and we'll take some more white. And, oh crap, I mean, we're gonna have to grab the other white. Okay. Keenan. Yes, Keenan. We need more white. white. 
You might have some white over there too in your Ooh, stuff. Let me see. For sharing. This one is? No, that's black. Might be. Is it this one? Green. Yes, here's some white. Right. We'll probably need. Um, okay, we'll make this work. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. All right. So add some white, and then I'm going to add a tiny bit of black to desaturate. De Go. It's actually in a black pouch, and it might be right there. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yes. If I can get something out of that, that would be awesome. And I, what I like to do is I like to add enough water so that when I'm going back and forth, it's not dragging or feeling like gloppy. I want it to be somewhat fluid. And so you can keep adding, you know, it'll start to dry on our palette as we go. And mm -hmm. so you just kind of keep going with it and add a little water as you need to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in this right-hand corner and I'm just gonna kind of start with a diagonal pattern. Oh, and you want to leave a little bit of the pink showing mm, through. Okay. okay, so we're gonna kind of do like a light, not quite a dry brush, but getting there. And then as I go through, I'm gonna start adding more white. Okay. And honestly, like the sky can look like anything, you know, like you, however you envision your sky is totally fine. I might kind of dry brush a little into this part, just to kind of connect it. And then as I get down to this corner over here, as I'm getting closer to the horizon, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of red because I want to have the look of more of a purpley white, purpley blue. There we go. I love when you add white to one and of the colors. a little colors. bit of white. Yeah? It, it just seems... I don't know if pastel is the right word. Yeah, yeah. But it just makes it it's so soft. Do you add white to the purpley mixture? Yes, okay. I do. I do. And so really, um, I can see some of the under layers showing through, which I really like. If you don't like that, you can cover that up. Totally up to you. I like and it. And then as I get down here, I'm actually even going to add a little more white, um, just to kind of give the idea of some clouds. So what I do, Sarah, is I just kind of like leave mm -hmm. my brush dirty, okay. but then pick up a little white. Uh -huh. And then I'm just gonna kind of like flick my brush back and forth here a little bit, okay? Using okay. kind of like little f the corner part of the brush and pushing down. I just wanna start giving the idea that there's some cloud, some clouds going on over there. Cool. Okay, Get a nice textured sky. Okay. Lovely. Like yes. And then once we do that step, I've got some extra paint on my brush, so I like to do a little brush work, oh, like I said. Okay, and yeah. so I'm just gonna paint on here, and you can make it a beautiful something, or you can just slap it on there and let it be what it's gonna be. Slap it on slap there. It on there. <laughs> That's my new favorite saying. Slap Go ahead and there. slap that you on know, there. Just, just <laughs> In other words, like, don't fret. Curious. Don't worry about it. Let's put it on there. All right, and then you can rinse your brush. Actually, but you know what? Well, yeah. We don't have to worry about rinsing it completely out because we're still going to be staying in the blue family. Oh, okay. So we're not too worried about that. All right, to, um, we're just going to paint the water area as kind of a dark gray. This is going to be the base layer of, of our water. So I'm going to get a, some blue, and then I'm going to get a little bit of black and mix that together, and then I'm going to add white. We have a lot of white, white Can with acrylic. Can I mix it on top of this, or are we touching this again? Um, we might come back to it, okay. you could. Okay. That's a good point though, because I do that on my palette all the time, is I just keep mixing and yeah. make a color into another color. I put too much white in mine. Do you want to use some of mine? Uh, I might, you know what I might do? Is I might start a new pile. Okay, yeah. It's usually easier than, <laughs> have you ever been there where you're trying to like oh. tint a giant pile? You're like, I just need to start a new That's pile. That's why I love the butcher tray, because I could just pull a tiny bit and just start a brand uh, new pile. Nice, instead yes. Instead of having to grab a whole section. I do that too. It's, Trying to match how dark you're going. Oh yeah, and I keep I keep changing it. <laughs> <laughs> where where what are we doing here? I'm gonna see <laughs> how adaptable Sarah Crane is. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually just a big test. This is yes. a big test. They're paying me extra <laughs> to test her. I'm just totally kidding. All right, that's pretty good because we're gonna come back and add more layers. So really, eh, so it's kind of like a charcoal color. It's yeah, it's I would almost say like a Payne's gray, like a. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
it's a little now more blue Now I feel like mine than, is too dark, gray. So I'm stealing from this. Yeah, okay, totally. Cool. And you can use this one too if you want. <laughs> no, I'm using my own. <laughs> Lori George. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start um, here so that I don't get this wet while I'm leaning over and I'm just gonna brush this on, okay, really lightly. Is it okay if you go over your sky? Absolutely. Okay. And I'm okay if like I show some brush marks because we're actually gonna, we're gonna be painting um, more over that. So I do want some of the pink to show through. Um, so I'm trying not to worry too much about that. I love that you can get thin and wide yes. lines with these washes. Yes. And I'm gonna come down and just kind of fill in our water down here. Man. Slap that paint on. Slap it's what I just like on there. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I love these color combos right now too. You liking it, yeah. Keenan? Great. I was. Okay. All right, so I, what I, I typically, when I add a layer, I like to kind of just push it a little bit and add one more kind of layer to it. So let's lighten up our color just a tiny bit that we just made. And then I'm just gonna kind of do I'm some dry brushing. Paint. So the way I do dry brushing is I mm -hmm. wipe up most of the paint. On your brush board? On my brush board, yep. Uh -huh. Sometimes on the table. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes on my apron. Like we were talking about that earlier. This is a great time. <laughs> and then I just on my arm. <laughs> and then Sarah, I just slap it on here. <laughs> just to kind of start adding a little bit of like dimension and like texture. Yeah, texture. Cool. I don't I don't really love this flat like solid masses of color, so I'm not gonna break that up. Awesome. And then yeah, once you've gotten to that point, you can brush off the rest of the paint on your brush and then rinse it. I like to work in multiples. Do you ever do that? Like I like to mm -hmm. have several going at once so then I can take more risks and do you find that you feel a little bit more yes. relaxed and feel like you know what, I'm not gonna ruin anything I just, I just keep going Well back. sometimes I feel like I mess with it so much because I'm like waiting or paying like too close attention yeah. but when you're Having to focus on a few, it's easier to leave something and come back to it. Yes. Giving yes. it space to breathe and you can kind of readjust your eyes. See, I feel like watercolor is a little bit more intimidating to me because with acrylic, you can paint over it if you mess up. I feel like with watercolor, I mean, you have some tricks, I know you do, but I feel like I'll mess it up in this room and it's going in the trash. Well, sometimes <laughs> we do that, <laughs> but it's yeah. just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. And actually, I'll probably just paint over it <laughs> with something else, a brush board. Maybe, I, maybe you Make should teach, maybe. Keenan. We'll have you come on one of the watercolor yeah. ones. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah, that would we'll be have fun. A good time. Can, that would be good. All right. So next, we are going to work on this middle ground here, which is going to be our grass. So when you go to the wetlands, you look out in the distance and you see some almost like puddles of water. You know, it's a little bit, a few ponds and and whatnot. And then you see these tall grasses, just some light grasses coming up. You don't. There's not a lot of trees. It's pretty flat. Mm -hmm. And so like you kind of just see the grasses and the water and then a little bit of a tree line. So that's like kind of what this is uh, showing. And so for this part, it is still pretty dark because again, this light is coming from here. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to use a dark gray green, <laughs> a desaturated dark green. And we're going to do that by using black, yellow, and green. So I like to do, you ever mix like black and yellow to make a earthy green? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. don't need very much black though. That's one of the mistakes I keep on making. Keenan can attest to that. <laughs> I refuse. On camera, it's a little intimidating to, you know, be on camera. It can be. This, right? Yeah. It's good. It is actually a very different experience trying to teach and paint on camera than like just painting on your own. Yes. And Thank you. Teaching you understand. <laughs> Understand you. I love that. <laughs> Nobody else in this together. room. Keenan yes. also gets it. You know, yes. Keenan's very—he's the hype guy. He's like, I, I appreciate that. And then once you get kind of a nice. Did you grab any blue in that mixture? I did. Okay. I, did. I was gonna say I'm like that looks more blue. What am Sorry I doing? About that. No, no, yes. no. You're a little bit of blue. Okay. Oh, you know what? This says green, but I added blue. Oh. So you're I'll grab fine. green. Okay. Sarah's gonna do it the way it's written on here. I'm gonna do green. Great. And then there's so many different ways to make green, right? Yeah. Awesome. I actually love to do a combination. I like to use green from the tubes mixed in with blue and yellow too. Oh, And like okay. just mix it all together. Yeah. I get different greens that way. I like that. I love it. I like that. All right. So we're just going to fill in the space. The whole pink space? Yes. Okay. Yep. We, of course, we want to leave a little bit of the texture poking through of the 
a pink background. And I might add a tiny bit more black to mine just because I want it to be nice and dark. And you can add water too to Ooh, yeah. keep your paint kind of spreading on there nicely. Um, the, the wetlands have lots and lots of birds. I was going to ask mm. Kanan what his favorite bird might be. Oh. Do you ever talk to Kanan? Like, I ask him a lot of questions. I refuse to talk to I, Kanan. I, yeah, I, I get so it. So he talks to the whiteboard <laughs> and pretends it's someone else. <laughs> do you have a favorite bird, Kanan? I do. What is it? Uh, my favorite bird, this is going to be weird, is, <laughs> a, bar is a, <laughs> a barn owl. That's not weird. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> nice. What's your favorite bird, Lori? <laughs> At the wetlands, I really like the blue heron. Ooh. And I thought about like putting it into this piece, but we'll have to do that another time. Yep. Have you painted a blue heron? No, I but it sounds that. good. We should do that. Okay. So I still have some little bits of the pink popping through. And what I could do is even take my bamboo skewer and just, Sarah, check it out. And okay, just kind of like, out through the wet paint. Oh. This is the best part. And I'm not too worried about like, oh my gosh, that's a really long line because I know there's a lot more texture coming back up. I just like the idea of something being very layered. I enjoy that look. So it, kind of the feel of this. Okay, yes, 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 okay. So while it's wet, yes. And you can add a little bit more water to get it to help flow. Sometimes acrylic can kind of drag a little bit. Well, I think that's why I always kind of struggle with acrylic because I want it to be smoother and I uh, feel like by making it, I end up using like an obscene amount of paint because I just end up grabbing yes. more and more paint. But it's okay if you grab water as well. Oh, yeah, okay, I, okay. I add water all of the time. Okay, cool. I like it to be, and some people do paint very thickly. I guess it's called like impos mm -hmm, and impasto. impasto. I prefer most of the time to have it be more fluid and spread nicely, although mm -hmm. I do like the dry brush effect also. And really, actually, there's a lot of mediums you can add to acrylic paint that we'll, we're going to do all the, to get some more thick textures. Keenan saw in our beginner series, we have a uh, super heavy gloss gel. Yeah. Ooh. It's and you, crazy. You kind of mix it into the paint and it adds like, it's very thick, but you put it on like your final layers to give some paste. dimension. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Awesome. And while I'm here, I, nope, actually we are good. We are good with this part. We're so good. The next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna start putting in our colors in our sky. <gasps> I'm really excited ready, about ready this for that. Ooh, I like that. Nice, Sarah. Sarah, thank you, thank you so much for giving the acrylics <laughs> a try. I love it. Only for you, Lori. Aww. Aww. <laughs> All right, so we're good. This time we're gonna work from left to right. We're doing our sky and remembering that the it's going to be lighter down here and as we go up we might get a few more saturated colors or a few more yeah like darker colors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so i'm going to start with a desaturated pink and i the kind of the oh. easy way for me to do it is just to and we're still using if, three quarter um yes okay good question yes and actually if we I wonder if there's a different place to go for that thing Share, or I could even bring this thing out too. Okay, so I'll mix on here for this one. So I'm gonna take some white and take a little bit of red. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna use the tiniest bit of black just because I don't want it to be super vibrant just yet. Okay, so just, I use the corner of my brush and dab a tiny bit of black on there. Okay, so you see that it made it a tiny bit cooler. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I like to add water all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this right here in my corner. And I'm just gonna start doing some little wisps. Okay. Very similar to how we kind of put the first one on. I want some of that background blue to show through. I don't wanna get too heavy on that. Okay. Is this a, a time where you would use the dry brush stroke? It does, it, it, it is starting to look like a dry brush, yes. I, I, it's more kind of, yeah, like dragging it and letting the kind of texture show through of the brush. Okay. Yeah, like a, like a dry brush, yeah. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now start adding more white and more red as I go up through here, and, and then we'll start adding some yellows to get some peach. Mm. Peachy looks, I love peach. One of my favorite oh colors. my gosh, me too. Love so it. Yeah. We should, we should 
We should be friends. <laughs> <laughs> we should think about that. We should. Give me a try, Sarah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, you know what? I went too far. So I'm going to add some white. I'm just going to mix on top of my pink pile here. Great. And then I'm going to get a little bit of red. So I'm kind of going back to what I had just a minute ago on my other palette. And then I'm going to start adding some more layers on here. Okay. So I'm just going to, and I, I like to kind of start um, over what I just did and then keep going. So I'm going to layer over that initial part that I just added. Man, this brush board is great. You like that? Yeah. yeah. It's a great idea. Thank you. So what I'm doing, Sarah, is I'm just going to take my pink color and I'm going to kind of drag it through Okay. Th this part of the sky. Okay. And this so is this like, like the that. peachy color? This is still kind of our pink color. We're going to get even more peachy. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, that's pretty. It's very vibrant. So I'm going to add some yellow and some white now to this. And if you need to add more color, you can. There we go. This is where like you can just do whatever you want, honestly, just to yes. make it beautiful, <laughs> however yes. you like it. Okay. I prefer like a lot of these peach and pink tones, and I like to get that yellow in there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I like to do. So I'm going I'm to add a little bit down here because I know the lighter colors I want towards the bottom. And then I'm just once again kind of fan it out. And I'm kind of pushing gently like um, to kind of get a little bit of the belly of the brush in there. So just kind of back and forth like this. And then every once in a while I might do like a little extra little dab or something just to mix it up. Just go a little crazy. Okay. <laughs> well, that's pretty Sarah. I love going crazy. Yes. I was going to say, this is where you just drop in a color. Yeah. Crazy right? I know. I, I think it's awesome. I'm excited to do, it. I'll do some watercolor at some point. Actually, we were talking earlier, the first one that um, Heidi ever did was the Flamingo, and she actually brought that to my house. Oh, really? And we did that together, yeah. Oh, that was like cool. my first introduction to Let's Make Art. My That's sister so brought a project over, and we watched Sarah Cray's video. <laughs> it was awesome. Like four years like, That was really a long cool. time ago. Yeah. That's so cool. And we did the citrus one too, I believe. The what one? The citrus. Like, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Awesome. So you can now, like, I, I added a little bit more yellow. So now I'm kind of going into still a pastel, right? We're not adding any super vibrant colors yet. And just put that along anywhere that you want. So is it like yellow peach? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you know, you know, colors are relative depending on what it's next to, right? Yep. What it kind of reads. So still reading as a peach. And I'm still kind of my... staying in that bottom left hand corner. Yes. That's kind of where this is, yes. my attention is going. Okay. Awesome. And then as you keep going, you can add more yellow and maybe a little more white. So right now I'm still kind of working in the lighter colors and then I will add some more vibrant touches um, towards the end of this step. So just put a little bit of yellow in. And so one thing I do is I just add a few little dabs so that I don't have a completely solid line. Break that up just Oh a yeah, like bit. break up your brush stroke. Works. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Make sure I'm following this, these directions so you don't confuse. All right. And then I think what we can do now, let's switch to our small brush when you get to the step and I'm going to do a few more vibrant like yellowy strokes. I love some vibrant color. Yes. And I, I'm just mixing right on top of this pile and add a little water if it feels like it's dragging. And then I'm just going to kind of pick a few places to kind of, you know, I'm going to add more yellow actually. So it stands out a little more. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of pick a few places to dab this more concentrated yellow. And in my, in my imagination, the sun is kind of picking up right here. And so I'm going to put just a little bit of more yellow there. And then I'll go ahead and lighten it up a tiny bit. Have you been out to the wetlands for a sunrise? Kanan, don't ask me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Kanan, you don't even I have know that. Been, so, I, to be fair, yes, but I live close enough to them that I drive by them often. And okay. so, does being in a car count? Yes, yes it does. Yes, it okay. does. Then, yes. 
Yes, I have. Nice. Many times. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, nice. <laughs> That's so funny. I actually, for this, um, for this wetlands box, I wanted to go out to the wetlands. I thought, okay, maybe I can catch a sunrise. It didn't happen. We got there a little later. <laughs> That's fine. Got some video, and it was nice. I wanted to kind of capture some of the sounds and sights and kind of communicate it that way. This is good. You nailed it. Because the videos it. you took were perfect. Yay. Keenan helped pull out the animal sounds, the bird sounds and stuff. That was really fun. Beautiful. I like it. Thank you. I What I did is I just took my pile and I added a little bit of red to it now. Okay. So we have kind of a little bit of more of an orange. We're doing a f we're going to layer in just a few more saturated colors in here. And we'll be adding a few more things to our sky as we go. So like, don't feel like you have to get it exactly where you want it right now. And I did switch to my um, smaller brush so that I could add just a little bit more delicate strokes. That makes sense. Okay. Do you ever have problems stopping? Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. I feel like we could talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just don't want to stop. I like say, okay, so we're done now. And then I'm like, wait, one more. Yeah. Wait, yeah. actually just one more yes. little. <laughs> Same. <laughs> And I just want to take a quick look at it, and I think I want to add a little bit more vibrant red and then move on to the next step. So I'm going to kind of go to this edge of this pile, pull some red, mix it into what I had there, because I don't want straight red. Mm -hmm. That would be too harsh. But I do want kind of that nice pink, like kind of a darker pink color. And I'm just going to pick a few special spots to kind of, I'm going to, so here's a technique that I like to do. Okay. I hold the end of my brush, uh -huh. and I just kind of tap it here and just kind of pull. Oh, okay. okay, yep. So just kind of, and you can twist it a little bit too. I'm just going to do some different, I'm going to vary the lengths of my strokes. And just add a few little details there. Right now with this darker layer beneath the beautiful sky, I'm yeah. picturing like a city silhouette landscape instead of a marsh. Well, oh, but well, we're going to do a marsh then. I just thought, no, yeah, no. I'm I just thought you should know. I like that. Well, yeah, because like, you know, you make a good point, it's no matter where you are, like you can still see a beautiful sunset yeah. in whatever setting. Yeah, so, yeah I can see that, Keenan. Yeah, Alright, so I'm gonna wipe off on my brush board here. Sometimes I, I start working on the brush board instead of the project. That's <laughs> 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 just fun. Oh, you know what? Actually, while we still have wet paint, I am going to add a little bit of that to the water as a reflection. And so what I'm going to do is just pick up maybe a, a little bit of this color very, very lightly. And then I'm, I had to look this up with the reflections, right? Because the, the sunset's going this way, but the reflection would go like this. Because it's a mirror. A mirror image. Yep, exactly. Uh, I know Sarah knows. <laughs> And that is a little, and we're gonna be coming back over it. So like these initial strokes, we're gonna be coming up back over it after it dries with a little bit of blue. So like they don't have to be perfect. We just want the idea of a little bit of color starting to come onto the water. And sometimes what helps me if I'm trying to match angles is if I'm like, okay, I'll swoop down and then make the opposite swoop. So ah, swoop, swoop. Yeah, so, so like if this. you're, because it's sometimes hard to think in opposite. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I had to double check practice. it. So if that's helpful for anyone, it's a swoop down, it's swoop down. Nice. Am I doing it right? You're doing it right. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm going to myself. I'm going to um, grab some more yellow because we want some that's probably not. And is it Too fine green. if my reflection goes outside my water? Because we're just going to paint over it, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> you are free. reflection went a little crazy. Mm. You know what? It's, I guess it's... Lori's making the rules. So. Yeah, Lori, is it okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, she was like, that's just, up to Lori. Just yeah. You've got to talk Sarah. to her about it. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Keenan, I feel like you're enjoying that too much. That's not very nice. Yeah, that what do you say? Huh? No, just <laughs> this is Lori. What you Lori's say? in charge, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't wait to do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm just adding a little bit of the pink, a little bit of the yellow, and calling it good. You can just kind of subside. Where, what colors do you want in there? And you can even mix it on there if you want to. So I'm kind of doing a little orange. Voila. All good. Okay. 
So what I will do now is go ahead and grab a little bit of our sky color and this isn't completely dry, but it should be close and just brush dry brush on some lighter value. So it's gonna be similar to what we had here going on if you happen to have, mm. oh, and actually, would you mind grabbing that um, spray bottle? So I like to mist my palette oh, while nice. I'm working so that I can extend the yeah. dry time. Wow. Nice. Okay. Yes. And so if this paint's still good, great. If not, we'll mix more. So I'm gonna do some white and some blue. Is it fine if it gets like little flecks in it? I don't like that that okay. much. I mean, it's okay, but it's not great. So I if that's it. happening, you usually just mix more? Yes. Okay. Or And I might even start on a new spot. So you don't get that texture palette. in there? Yes, okay. absolutely. So I've got the color I want, I believe. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna brush off a good amount of it. And then I just wanna dry brush this on. And I'm gonna go ahead and go over some of what I did with the um, reflection, because we just need a little bit of a hint there. And yeah, just kind of some horizontal loose strokes. Ooh. Yeah, like that. And that blue, I like that blue. You color. like it? Yeah, I do. It's good. Awesome. Okay, I think we finished step four and are ready to move on to step five. Whenever you're ready. No rush, Sarah. You are good. I'm like, I still want to keep messing with it. I have that problem a lot. I do. I, I'm going to wash out this brush too. Do you just kind of force yourself to move on to the next step if you still want to mess with it? Or how do you approach something like that? It depends. Sometimes I overwork it and mm -hmm. I regret it later. And so I <laughs> yeah. learned to try to restrain myself. And especially when I'm teaching, I found that I, I need to just stop because I'm trying to model Mm -hmm. You know, you probably can relate. Like I'm trying to model that idea that, hey, leave it alone because we know yeah. we're going to come back to it and add more so we don't have to mess with it now. Have you ever ruined a painting? Because I sure have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think yes. we well, talked about that anyway. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Um, so yes, now we're going to work a little bit on our grassy area in here, like our okay. land area. Okay. And what I'm going to do, if you're, we can, my brush is dripping, so I'm going to tap it off here a little bit. We are going to create, we're going to use our scraper tool to create some grass, te grass textures. Ooh, okay. Sweet. Yes. And actually, oh, there it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to mix a, um, oh, okay. Actually, we're going to do the tree line first. I just okay. read that. So we're going to do a dark blue gray. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be putting in the tree line. So you, as you can see here, very mm -hmm, loose, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just the idea, I want it to be mostly black, but we're gonna put a tiny bit of white in there and a tiny bit of blue, just to make it oh, not so stark. Okay, like we actually just probably pull from there. Oh yeah. Maybe add a little black if you want. Nice. And for this, I am just gonna kind of come up here and tap my brush. So I'm gonna hold it, um, actually I'm gonna vary it, but first I'll start kind of up and down like this and just kind of tap some stuff there. And then I'm gonna turn it this way and kind of make some long strokes. And we're gonna come back over this layer in just in a second too, so no worries. I wanna make it look like it's not too uniform mm -hmm. because you'll see, when you look at a horizon, you'll see a part with maybe some trees, maybe you see some, some shorter trees and then maybe nothing and then a little bit more. So I don't want it to be too, uh, too much the same. I want there to be a little bit of variety. So it looks variety so it looks a little bit more real. Okay, so once I put in that first initial layer, I'm gonna take the same pile, add a tiny bit of white. And then I'm gonna add this towards the top. Because in my mind, I'm thinking the light is coming up and there's gonna be a little bit of highlight on the tops of really probably the backs, but like this top area of the tree line and it should be subtle like we don't need to worry too much and I, I don't know I like to I like kind of the loose expressionist type style mm -hmm. um, for this and if you if you want to scratch in now you could with your either your bamboo skewer or your palette knife and I'm just gonna do a little bit of just kind of like at the top indicate there's just a little bit of texture up there 
Have you ever yeah, used a bamboo so skewer fun. to mm -mm. scratch into paint? I'm having a great time. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Okay, so once you feel pretty good about your tree line, like you can just we can move to the next step. Great. We'll wash off our brush. We're going to be using our three quarter inch brush for this next part. Okay. And we're going to be mixing kind of a olivey green, if you will. And the way that I like to do that again is kind of doing the black and the yellow. Although, let me see what I wrote on here. I said, create a, oh, slightly lighter than in step three where we did, yeah, we did. Actually, that time I did black and yellow. You added some green. So we'll do black, yellow, green, and some white. So I'm okay. going to start with the green this time. Start with the green and mix it over here. Actually, let's see. Do I mind. This? Well, if you don't mind. I don't mind okay. at all. All right. So I'll do some green. And actually, I see you got a nice pile there. So that reminded me that we are going to need quite a bit more than some of these other. Oh, because are we doing amounts? the whole middle? Yes. Okay. Because we are going to do the whole middle. And then I'm going to add some yellow to this. Okay, and then I'm adding a little bit of black to mine. That phthalo, phthalo green is very powerful. Mm -hmm. I added a little too much, and now I'm, I'm going to go back in and just add a little more yellow to kind of knock it back. There we go. Okay, so this is kind of a fun technique that I tried to do for this project to kind of create some grasses without individually, you know, mm -hmm, painting mm -hmm. each little grass. I just struck grass. So what I did is I take, we're going to have our scraper, scraper tool ready and we're going to pick a few places to kind of paint on a swath of grass. And then while it's still wet, we're going to have to move pretty quickly. Uh -huh. Use the long end of the scraper tool and just pull straight up. Ooh, okay? okay. And that's going to create some nice strokes. And then we're going to repeat that with a lighter color. So I know there's probably going to be some grasses along the water's edge. And so I'm just going to kind of put a strip of paint down there and then I'm going to pull. And this is going to be low contrast. You may not see it super well. Yeah, you can kind of see that. Because again, like this is in shadow um, in our landscape. So you won't see a ton of it, a ton of light. It won't be super obvious. All right. And then, nice. I'm going to pick a couple other areas. So maybe we have some here and just a, you can be have free reign here. Do whatever you, wherever you think. There's some grasses. The wetlands covered in grass. <laughs> Lots of ty different types of grasses, but wildflowers. Do you have a favorite wildflowers there? Do you like the sunflowers, <laughs> Sarah? <laughs> sunflowers. <laughs> no, sunflowers are my favorite wildflowers. Did oh, I do wow. it right? Thank you. Oh, what are the here's, here's the twenty bucks. Sir. Thank you. No, actually, Thank Sarah's you. more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm picking a few spots to just go ahead and add that in, knowing I'm going to be coming back with another, um, a lighter value. And then you can also, okay, so this is a good time to kind of shape the water up here. Like yours looks pretty good. Mine is kind of looking a little bit too, like, scoopy, scoopy and symmetrical. Because mm. when you're looking at the water, it kind of is, it's more like this, where it's kind of cut in mm -hmm. and you don't really see necessarily an edge. Okay, so I'm going to kind of use this paint to add some grasses in here along the edge and also cut in to my water. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. But I feel like I have to do shorter strokes with the ones up here, yes, right? Okay. Yes, because this is going to be farther away. Yes. Thank you for that reminder. So once you've got a, like your base layer of the grasses down, we're going to tint this to, <laughs> sorry, do we need some more shop towels? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just wipe all my, yeah. no, 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 I just Maybe, forgot no. that I had oh. it oh. and okay. used my apron instead. Oh, you know, okay. this is why acrylic is really dangerous it's for messy. me, Lori, because I, know. I just wipe on whatever is closest to me <laughs> and it's just not, a, it's just not safe for me, but it's okay. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's, it is more risky. I feel like you have to be an adult, Sarah. That's, <laughs> that's how you handle acrylic. You don't have to be an adult, Sarah. No, okay, good. Now okay. we're in, when we're in the studio. <laughs> so I added, I added a little too much. I added a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white to the pile. 
Okay, so because you can lighten the value with yellow, a, li a lighter color than what you're using, or you can lighten it with white. I still want to keep it kind of a gray green, so like a de desaturated green. Just a little bit lighter than what we put on before. And so now I'm just going to kind of go over some of the same spots and add this kind of highlight color and then maybe a couple other little surprise Whoa, mine spots. mine got way lighter. Ooh. Let's adjust that. Let's tone that down. I... Nope. That's all right. <laughs> Use mine. <laughs> or or like, go with yeah, the vibrant, yeah. Sarah. It's fine. I mean, I do like vibrancy. Yes. So you can probably see that more on camera now. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of pick a few spots and, and you... I like to go off the page a little bit too because to kind of get the idea that the grasses continue. And then again, yes, as you go up towards the horizon, things are going to get smaller and closer together. Hmm. And so I'm going to have maybe a, a few more strips because you're going to see more in a smaller, you're going to see more land in a smaller amount of space. Does that make sense? Probably yes. Sense. Yeah, no, it makes yeah. sense. Okay. I like that. Okay. Oh, this is cool. So I can start to see some of the neo color coming through since it has <gasps> some oil in it. Oh, okay. um, it wants to come through. It wants to be seen. I like that. When I originally was kind of playing with this method, I was like, ooh, we shouldn't do that. I should use a pencil. I'm like, you know what? No. Yeah. I like yeah. it. It is good. Okay. That's pretty. I am going to do one more tint of something a little less saturated. And so I'm going to add a little bit of black. Or, or actually, you know what? We could add some red. A little bit of red to, since it's a, Sarah knows this, but I'm telling you, since it's a complementary color, it will work to neutralize the green, which is what I want. Green neutralized. Yes. That sounds like a, you're on a mission. A mission. I know, that's what I, we did it. Green's been neutralized. And then I'm going a <laughs> tiny bit lighter, and I'm going to just kind of pick a few special, special places to have some slightly lighter grass. And again, you will want to work quickly. If you have slow dry medium, you can add that to help um, mm. slow down the drying time. We actually do carry that now, which is great. And you mentioned that in the beginner series. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. I did. I, that's one of the first things I started using, the first mediums I started using because I, acrylic, it was drying faster than I could manage you know like i still wanted to work with it and so i would use a few drops of slow dry medium and have a little more time to play if you will and we are gonna you know we are gonna have like grasses coming up here so don't worry too much about anything being perfect because a lot of it won't show how are you doing over there I'm doing so good. You're doing so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing great. <Nice>. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think, yep, with this lighter color, oh, yeah, I want to put just, since I'm going to be able to see this bigger, mm -hmm, since mm -hmm. it's closer to me, I want to kind of play on that a little more. I'm going to add some paint, and you can add some water, too, to make sure it's going to flow well or scrape well through a little grass, this thing. And then I'm going to pull up, and I'm going to kind of try and exaggerate that. Then I'm going to use the side of this thing and kind of make some grass. Okay. Grass texture. <laughs> and when you have grasses, they're going to go in all different directions. Not all different directions. You're going to have some that are going this way, some that are going this way. And they might crisscross a little bit. Because you can't control grass. Probably not. Some of us might be able to, Keenan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. So... If you wanted to be a little fancy, you could add a little reflection of the grass into the water. Oh, great, great, because I accidentally did that, so that works out. <laughs> I was like trying to wipe it off. <laughs> I did, actually did not see that, so I, you were good. Okay, and then, oh, you know what, I'm gonna use my brush board and wipe off what I have left. And then we can move on to that next step. Ooh, I like it. Lost my edge a little bit. So what are you thinking so far about the acrylic, Sarah? I, I'm loving it. I am so messy. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you guys can see how much pain is. I like is. seeing Sarah a little messy. This is good, Sarah. I'm like, real. But this is this is normal, yeah? For me, yes. Okay, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Especially we're, we're when we're using here. the scraper tool. Yes. Yeah. And so actually, like, we put, I shared my shielding lotion that I talk about in part six of the beginner series. Yep. I shared it with Sarah beforehand so that she it'll did wash that. off so nice nicely. Her. Hopefully, right? Okay. So I think once you get to this step, oh, I like the vibrant yellow and stuff that you got there. So once we get to this step, we can, um, once we get to this place, we can go to the next step is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Which is to add some the more clouds to our sky. Mm. Have you ever seen a sunset or sunrise, excuse me, where you, the, the foreground clouds are darker? Yes. That is what I'm trying to capture here. Okay. And so I love, I love that look and wanted to try and emulate that. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix, we're actually probably gonna use some of what we already have in the dark blue green, blue gray category. So actually like even right here, if you don't have paint still mixed, it, you would just use some blue and black and a touch of white. Cause I, I want it to be kind of like a, a dark blue, gray, right? Yeah. Yep. Something like this. Yeah, cause it's like the clouds are silhouetted against the. Yes. And so when you do this part, you don't want to have too much paint or water on your brush. Okay. Cause it's going to be a very light touch. And then I might do just kind of a little bit of practice, which you can do that on your brush board if you want. And what I like to do is, um, pull from right to left. So I'm just kind of dragging from right to left. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I want to try and avoid having maybe a sharp line there. So then I would just kind of dab. Okay. Mm. And I want them to be kind of airy where you can see the sky through it. Um, and then we'll kind of play with the composition as far as um, how many we have and where. I, I want to have one up here to indicate that it's kind of closer to us. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to take my paint and I'm going to just kind of drag some paint over here. And if you use the corner of your brush, it kind of gives a rounder uh, shape. I'm actually not very good with a round brush there. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I'm okay. I, I don't know. Flat brush is just for me. I'm just more comfortable. They're, com they're more the comfortable. ones for you? Yeah. And then I don't want to have two, my clouds look too symmetrical or too uniform. And so to do that, you kind of have to think about it a little. So I'm going to have one over here. I don't want them all to be the same size. I don't want them to all be the same distance apart or the same shape. So we're going to have a couple little ones over here. And this one I'm just dabbing with kind of like the corner of my brush. We are going to be adding another layer on top of these. So right now I'm just kind of trying to block in the shape. I love clouds. I'm not, I'm still trying to master painting they them. They are so elusive. They are. They're so They're hard. hard. Clouds are. are tough. I spent an entire semester focusing just on clouds. Really? I still that don't have it. <laughs> I still don't have it. Uh, you've got, you got, you got, you got some of it, Sarah. You're good. Okay. So I just kind of, I decided to do a couple little dabs and then right on top of that, I'm going to add a little bit of white to our mix. And just to throw a curveball, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow. I wanna eventually I'm gonna put some aqua green kind of in there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of add a little bit. Oh, you want a little? You want it to still be kind of a dry? Yep. Oh, okay. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of dimension to the clouds. So that dark color is acting more as kind of our base. So I'll dab over that, leaving some of our base showing through. Okay. And we're going to be adding a little bit more on top of that here in a minute. This would be a good time to see. I think this cloud is a little too flat on the top. So I'm going to adjust that. But then I'm just going to say, okay, it's good. I'm not going to fiddle with it. The if you wanted to add, if you wanted good. to add a little bit of blue into there, you could, but you don't have to, but I want to, so I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, let's do it. We can, I'll grab some more paint here in a second too. So uh, once again, slightly dry. Oh yeah, I like that. This softens it up a little bit. Nice. And you, while you have this on your brush, you could add a little bit of reflection onto the water. And I would actually use 
if we still have a little bit of it, I would use a little bit of the darker and kind of create, use that to create a little bit more shadow. I like to call those clouds the night shift clouds. Mm. <laughs> You know, because they're they're in the foreground, but they're moving away from the sunrise. Uh -huh. That's so really the deep, Keenan. New clouds. Wow. You know, it's Keenan always this deep. He yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Sarah for the yeah. official <laughs> word. Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Let me tell you all about Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> Documentary style. Let's do it. Okay. All right. How you doing? Oh, pretty. I'm doing I like good. It. I like that, Sarah. I'm feeling good. You are good. All right, the next step is going to be to add some, I think we're adding a little bit more to our sky. Let me double check the instructions. Do you still have to refer to in the instructions, the step sheet, Sarah? There's so many steps. I just make paintings. it up as I go, really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I should. Actually, I do. Keenan actually is. Keenan has like cue cards, doesn't he? I like pause it. I'm like, Keenan, what do I yeah. do next? Well, we uh, had to have Sarah do the tutorial. Yeah, actually, we did all that already. I mean, I'm the pretty face. Yes, Let's face exactly. it. Exactly. I can't. I've got a face for Keenan's radio. the one with the cap. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Too funny, Keenan. All right, <laughs> so we are going to now do some of our foreground grasses. Yay! You want to do that? Yes, I do. Okay, and we're going to be using our Neo Colors. Oh, yes! All right, okay. okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use our round brush. I have a round eight. I gave you round six because I couldn't find another round eight. That's all right. That's that, my go-to brush. Yes, I know <laughs> that, like, yeah, I actually feel like really close. There's a picture of Sarah on the number six brush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to have people hilarious. like, we're not kidding. And mine didn't have one. <laughs> Oh, this is too fun. Okay, I like that you're good with all the joking, Sarah. Me too. I like that. <laughs> makes, makes it go better. I think I'm funny. I, <laughs> same. <laughs> <laughs> now you leave you wondering if I'm thinking you're funny or I'm funny. <laughs> We're both funny. We are. We're so funny. People watching it are like, can we you should just take it paint? On the road? Can you we just? We want to see the neo colors. We want to paint. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna do the neo colors. All right. So with the grasses, I'll show you on the uh, sample here. Okay. We are going to start at the bottom of your page. Yes. And we're gonna pull all the way up to the top and curve off <gasps> of the page. Yes. Okay. Yes, so yes, our yes. lead. Our lead ones are gonna go off the page. Now, the way that we're gonna incorporate the neo colors, I'm using the thalo green, is I'm going to, now I do wanna point out too, I'm gonna start my grasses here. Okay. I did several other versions where I started to go this way and I didn't like it as much compositionally. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna start about a third from the right. Of okay, the page. perfect. And I'm gonna make my first lead grass and it's gonna go all the way up and it's gonna cross over part of our sky. You want it to cross the horizon line. Yes, cross okay. the horizon line, thank you. And so, just like that. And these don't have, grasses don't curve perfectly. They're gonna be a little more haphazard, so don't worry too much about um, having them look a certain way. The wonkier, the better, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're into the wonky. Yeah. Somewhere in nature, there's a wonky piece of grass, yes. like yes. whatever you're about to do. Lots of places. And I'm gonna leave a couple of blades of grass that are um, still sh showing where I see the end of them. And mm -hmm. then the rest are just gonna kinda go off of the page. And then I have a couple going this way. This is like the very foreground of our landscape. And then I might even have one that kinda bends and goes that way. So are you, do you have a favorite, like do you love florals the most or like a favorite? I mean, subject. No. No. I, I love so many different things, and it changes too. Yeah. Yeah. But right now, I'm painting flowers for a project that I'm working on, and I'm obsessed with that, and it's going great. But landscapes are a true love. I mean, yeah. animals were really kind of nice. what I was really into a few years ago, so just kind of shifts. Yeah. I go I'm, with the flow. I like that, Sarah. I think that's great. Lori, well, you're asking Sarah a lot of questions, and you haven't asked me any questions. <laughs> What's your favorite bird? That's true. That's, that's great. true. And you didn't Keenan, ask Sarah. Keenan, why don't you calm Touché. down? <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Sarah, what's your favorite bird? <laughs> She's like, too late, Lori. <laughs> Lori, too late. You, you don't even chance. care, okay? That's like pouring salt in the wound. I know you don't care. <laughs> that's too funny. Oh, can I use that green? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. We, we are short on the neo colors over here with those specific colors. Keenan so used them all. Yeah, he was out coloring. Turns out they're the also sidewalk. a good snack. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. The later in the day it gets here. Wow. I'm, I'm observing so much. I like okay. it, Sarah. Okay, I'm just going for it. Yes. Great. And so what we're going to do, I like that. She's like, just get done. I am going to use black paint. Okay. okay so I'm taking a little bit of black paint, adding some water. It's going to be somewhat of a fluid consistency. Is this the half? Half brush? inch. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. And then I am just going. Just straight black? Um, sorry. Yes. <laughs> well, sorry, the sorry. thing is, I mixed it. I mixed it on a pile, so that's a good okay, point. Okay. Okay. So maybe a little bit of blue and a little bit of white, but pretty dark. Okay. Pretty this dark. This is gonna be like, like you're saying with the clouds. This is gonna be kind of the silhouette of the okay, grasses. Okay. Okay. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually going to use the neo color lines that we drew, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. since they're water soluble, they'll sort of activate with the paint. I don't want to go over them completely. So like, okay. I'm just gonna kind of use them as like a guide okay and and kind of go do similar lines okay and you don't have to follow it completely you want to leave some of it showing um yeah like does that make sense it 100 percent okay makes and then we're going to repeat this with yellow in a minute and like Ooh. an olive green i like the grasses of the oil and there there's so many different i think i was reading on the sign they had there that's like Three or four hundred species of plants, different Holy species cow. of plants there. Yeah, it's like got a lot of got a lot of life there. Oops. If you don't like, if you paint something, you can kind of wipe it off if you're fast. Grab it and go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I just want a few hints of grasses kind of going the other way. Nice. Okay. So once you get to that point, we can do some yellow. Okay. Okay. So we're going to we're going to mix a and kind of an olive green and we're going to do that by using some uh, of our red. Okay. I'm I'm not washing my brush out red and our green. A little tiny bit of phthalo green. Okay. I still have some black on my brush and then I'm going to add some yellow. Another way to get here would be to use black and yellow mm -hmm. and maybe a tiny bit of red to saturate. This is still pretty um, green to me, so I want to add a little bit of yellow to go, a little more yellow to go to more of an olive green and then a tiny bit of red. So lighten the value and then, there we go. So now we have a little more of a brown color. It was a little tricky to get there though. We are good. One thing I find when teaching, because like I, when I paint for myself, I'm just constantly going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and mixing colors. So I'm like, okay, how do I do that? And how do I, how do I explain that in an understandable way? So just know that if you're not quite, if you don't quite get the same color, keep going until you get what you like by thinking about what you know about complementary colors and how certain colors will desaturate other colors. Yeah. All right, so then, okay, I have this olive green color. I'm going to lighten it a tiny bit with a t touch of white. And I'm going to leave that there for two seconds because we're going to add some yellow grasses. So I'm going to just come here and I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm going to add a few pieces of yellow. This is kind of where some of our vibrancy is going to come through in the front. Wow. <laughs> that is vibrant. And so I'm going to take my brush and kind of copy what we were just doing a minute ago and kind of barely go over that yellow. So we have some, basically just making it look like some different, some depth in our grasses. We have some different hues and some different values. Those neo colors are the truth. You think so? Oh yeah. <laughs> Why did you eat them then? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be one of them. I oh, got Oh my goodness. If I could have a paint color named after me, for all these lessons, after all these lessons I've taught, that would be just great. That is so funny. <laughs> Let me know how that goes. Oh, great. Good luck with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And then now we're just going to add some different hues. So I'm going to add a um, little. I'm going to kind of lighten this value with some yellow, and let me add some more yellow to our palette. And Sarah, if you need any other colors, any more paint, let me know. Okay. So we can use plenty of paint. I think I'm going to put some blue on here, too. So no, we'll need that. Actually, you have some blue. I'll grab, reach across and grab Go it. Go for it. Okay. And then, there 
get them. And I might put some white in there. Okay. All right, so once I do kind of this olive green and kind of we're leaving, we're leaving some of the neo color showing through, we can even take our bamboo skewer and kind of scratch in. And the neo color wants to be seen, so it tends to come through pretty well. I think you're making your own custom scratch art, you know? Yeah. You know, I thought about doing that for a project where no. you like do like a rainbowy background and then put black over and then scratch. Yes. Is that what you mean? Thought about that. That'd Don't steal amazing. my ideas, Keenan. No, I would, <laughs> I would never do that out loud. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to make an Instagram called Almost Lori George. <laughs> <laughs> and then mine will say Almost Sarah Cray. <laughs> <laughs> and mine will say Almost Keenan H. Yes. <laughs> it's like a full circle, full, full full circle, circle moment. moment. Nobody else works here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> for everybody else. No one else, one video no one else is invited to this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So I'm going to do a little bit of a lighter. Ooh, okay. a little overboard there. A little bit of a lighter value okay. of green but still kind of a nice desaturated one. I need to, I need to kind of get, get it back to where I was here. Man, it's so fun to watch these come to life. Is this going on my grass? Yes, so this is now, now you're gonna be um, just kind of doing your own blades grass. You're not following a neo color anymore. Just okay. kind of add a few, a few touches of, still using some desaturated colors because we know that most of this land is still in shadow. Now when the, the, the light starts to come up into the sky, some of it might, just, show a few highlights in parts of the grasses. One thing for acrylic paint that I like to share with people is that in order to get straighter lines, you want it to be more fluid. And mm -hmm. so I'm gonna add more water. And then I do tend to, you asked about gloppiness before, mm -hmm. I do tend to kind of taper my brush by oh, pulling okay. it through just so I can have a little more control to get some nicer lines. And then I just kind of add paint towards the tip of the brush. And then I hold it straight up and down, just like you do when you're doing um, Thin lines. lines. Yep. And so I'm just gonna kind of brush that on, do a few little wispy strokes. Almost, it's almost a less is more thing at this point, probably. I can easily overdo things, so I have to tell myself. Lori, do you have a lot of, uh, do you have a specific brush you use the most? You know, I use a half inch flat a lot. Really? Yes, a three quarter inch. Well, when I'm painting at home, I, I'm mostly painting on canvas, so I would use bigger brushes, but I tend to gravitate towards flats and filberts. Okay, oh, filberts. Yeah, yep. filberts Classic a lot. Filbert. Have you ever used a dagger brush? <gasps> I, yep. Oh wait, <laughs> we, cut. <laughs> we don't want to share that yet. I, I'm like, I want to wait and do that. Anyway. Yeah. Is that what you're doing too? Don't worry about yeah. it, Lori. <laughs> Asking a lot of questions. But you're asking a lot of questions that I'm not ready to share yet. You know, it's funny because I, I was like, wait, I wasn't going to say anything because I'm like, I want to use it for something else. And you probably do too. It's a race. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. So now I'm going to add a few more vibrant strokes. So I'm going to kind of bring, oh, that's not enough different. So I'm going to a little more yellow. And you know what I might do is add a tiny, tiny bit of the phthalo. All I'm doing right now is just trying to add a little bit of variety to, maybe even add a little blue, um, the strokes, the uh, grasses. There you go. So I might add a couple of vibrant colors in there. Does your grass, do your grass lines go all the way to the right hand? Yes. Okay. Most. I'm kind of thinking maybe the wind is blowing, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. And you can see here, like, they're mostly just desaturated colors. Not a whole lot of um, differentiation. So pretty. But so, yeah. And so this, these, this color, I like. I'm liking how this is adding a tiny bit of, um, like saturation. And here at this point, I'm just kind of adding this stroke to the what I would think of maybe the tops of the grass, or here and there, not in a not a straight line. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> No, it makes sense. Okay. And then while it's still wet, I like to, it's called, Keenan can tell you what this is called, the scratching in. There's a name for it that I learned after I was already doing the technique. It starts with an S, Keenan. Oh, oh, he already knew. Okay, he was leaning forward like, I know this, Lori. I was ready to I, oh. I quiz him a lot. She does. <laughs> really? <laughs> Interesting. Don't know why. Because <laughs> I'm like, talk to me. I'm nervous, maybe. I don't know. 
Now Sarah's going to start quizzing me. You know. On the lessons I prepared. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I'm, during this stage too, I'm going to pick one of these colors and just add a few blades of grass over here because you, the stuff in the foreground is going to be more detailed because it's closer to you. You're going to see more of the details. So add some grasses. And it'll be larger. So I might do like two colors here. And you can scratch in if you'd like. Make some grasses there. And then I might come up here and just add a few little smaller and closer together little strokes. Just to get kind of the idea that there's something going on there. But really the wetlands, they're just covered in grasses. Okay. So I'll do this green and then I might go back to one of our other darker colors. We'll add some black here. Still want to keep it desaturated. So this is kind of gray green and I'm going to add a tiny bit of, yep, like that. And then one thing I like to do too when I do grasses is add a little bit of a shadow kind of mm -hmm. towards the base of it. So let me add a little bit more black to our palette. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black. Just to kind of make it look like there's, oof, I'm still doing kind of a dry brush in here. Just make it look like there's a lot of grasses in there and there's some depth there going on. And then I'll probably scratch in one more time just to break up that mass. Okay, how's it going? Great. Great. The, I think we're getting close to our last stages, Sarah. So yeah. what we're going to do is we are going to add a few kind of a couple touches of this vibrant like mm, turquoise I've color. been waiting oh, for that pretty. this whole time. I I'm like, like how, when are we going to do your the aqua part? I love how thin your your grasses are. Like you oh, have really you. good brush control. <laughs> That's nice. Um, you stop it. Yeah, so we're going <laughs> to we're going to do a little bit of turquoise and then we're going to do a little bit of this like dusty blue. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay yay. Yes. I'm really dusty excited. Blue, turquoise. And we'll add a little bit to here mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm, and we can even mm -hmm. put some on the water if we want to. All right, so I'm going to rinse out most of the green right now that I've got. Is it okay to dark. leave your brushes in this water so the like acrylic doesn't dry on them? Like I know in watercolor that's a big no-no. What is it in acrylic? You're asking me a quick question for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, then. we should always leave our brushes no, in water. No, I'm testing you. You test Keenan, and I test Keenan. Yeah. I'm just kidding. She's your backup. I see this. <laughs> um, no, you don't really want to leave them on there. You really do want to rinse your brush out and get the paint off because acrylic will dry on your brush. And yeah, that's what I, I mean yeah. like how do you remember to rinse your brushes though if you switch brushes. I mean I don't always. Oh. Okay. Okay. But so I'm not typically, alone. Typically like typically you can go half an hour to an hour before you have to rinse it completely oh. before like there's a problem. Okay. But then actually the master's brush cleaner that yeah. we have, yeah. I actually tried it with some uh, brushes that I had with paint crusted onto it, like that I thought were just goners. I kind of kept them and off for texture. It, back? Mm -hmm. <gasps> it took a bit of elbow grease it, or it took a bit of waiting so I just soaked it. Oh. I like saturated it with the, um, actually Keenan, can I see that brush cleaner? This is what we're talking about. It's the master's brush cleaner. I don't have the yeah. lid with it right now. So if you have a little crusty acrylic on your brush, you just kind of let this soak in mm -hmm. there and it cleans it up. Yep. So you just add water. And I know you've, I think you've used this, but like with acrylic, mm -hmm. I, you can tell I've got a lot of green and black in my brush that it's yeah. cleaning out. I just saturated it with it and then let it soak like that. Good to know. Yeah, and then I came back the next day. Because that was the and other thing when I tried acrylic <laughs> is I would just destroy my brushes because I it, wasn't good at cleaning yeah. them. It is harder on your brushes than than watercolor for sure. Yeah. So a you stiffer brush. You have to treat brush. watercolor brushes like they're princesses. Do you, you know what I mean? Like they are. <laughs> You're to artists or what do you mean? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> ah, <classy>. Too funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're having a little bit too much fun. I almost forget. I'm, like I'm having teaching a great here. time. <laughs> <laughs> we had lunch as a team before this, and there were some pretty funny things that happened. And we're all kind of just cracking up. It's been a good day, you know. I feel like it's been. A good I day. laughed really hard today, is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You know, we all need that. I'm gonna make a turquoise color by. I'm gonna start with phthalo green. You know what, okay. Sarah? You wanna, yeah. Do you want to switch? We can switch to this paper palette. Have you ever tried a paper palette? No, but I want to. Okay. Do I move this so out? So let's put it in front of us because we can still use the paint that's on there. I'm but we'll do our mixing on the paint palette. The paper palette. So at home, I have like five of these. 
Oh, great. Because <laughs> I don't, I love having a ton of mixing space. Yeah. And then I just keep them, I throw them away. And actually, I kept some of them for like the photo shoot when we came here to do cool. the wetlands. Cool. So it was kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of phthalo green. A little bit, right? And oh, then, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't mean, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't see how much you got. I promise. I, I got too to much. I got way too much. But that's okay. That's okay. A little bit of yellow. Okay, and I don't know how you like to mix your tur turquoises. There's a bunch of different ways to get there. But I tend to have to add the white to kind of see where I'm at with the... Um, okay. hue. But can we stop for a second and look yeah. at this color? Because that is gorgeous. That's a good gorgeous color. What would color. you call that? Don't ask me those questions, oh. Lori. It's more of like an opinion. <laughs> I was thinking, to me, it looks like, like peacock blue, maybe? Or yeah. But maybe, I don't know. It's all it's kind of subjective. Lisa, some people really know their pigment colors and where like <laughs> the pigment and the earth they come from. And I am just not uh, there, one of those people. There <laughs> are those people out there. <laughs> Do you know them? Those people. <laughs> Those people. Now I am going to add a touch of black to this because I do want to de desaturate it. See, so like this Edgy. is a tiny amount. I want to desaturate a tiny bit to kind of go with our other colors. And add a little water so that I can so it's fluid. And I actually, you know, I don't have very much paint over here, so I'm gonna add a little bit of white too. Okay, so I've got a nice kind of a turquoisey color, and I'm just gonna pick a few little spots to, um, and I don't want it too wet, but I'm gonna pick a few little spots to kind of highlight. So maybe there. Oh, and for this one, I recommend holding your brush at the end again, and then we're gonna kind of make a swooping, like a curve motion this way, and then I wanna lift the brush up from time to time, mm, right? Mm -hmm, so that you're mm -hmm. not getting, we don't need to do a big old stripe, like fully complete stripe. We want it to be broken up, because really with grasses, you're not gonna see, a, the entire blade of grass. You're gonna see parts of different blades of grass. So I say. <laughs> and then I might do it a couple here. Said. And yeah. I'm just, I took some of your turquoise. Do it. I liked it better than mine. All good. Sarah liked my turquoise. Yes. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a few little touches too. Oh, and I want mine to be a little bit airier than like that straight fluid one, so I want it a little bit drier. Does that make sense? Yep. And I'm just going to do a few little grasses over here, and then I might do a couple little taps of grass towards like this other water, body water over here, just to kind of continue it through. Yeah. And actually, you know what? While we have this color, uh, no, we're gonna come back to it. Hold on, we're gonna add a little bit more to our sky in just okay. a second here. And we're gonna use a color very similar to this. But the last thing we need to do for our grasses is just add kind of like a dusty blue. So I'm gonna pick up, I'm not cleaning my brush, I'm just gonna pick up some blue and mix it. And then I'm going to make sure it's desaturated and lighter. So I'm gonna add some white. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of uh, black. Do you use black very often? Yes. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't necessarily use it in my own stuff, but you, you're like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Sorry, Lori. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So funny. <laughs> We're all, like, slap happy today. It's hilarious. <laughs> all right. So kind of a dusty blue. Beautiful. Let's see. Yep. So Ooh. this is, like, your light value, right? So I'm just going to take that. A few. Do it. Uh, um, Sarah said beautiful and added her own blue to the dusty blue. As <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and take <laughs> now, now, if she asks me to paint Listen, with her, she, in. I yeah. might have to, you know, I'm trying to do the same thing. <laughs> Sarah's a trooper for coming on and do, you know, it's like, you know. Do they even teach acrylic art school or I don't know, like, is it, do you guys focus mostly on like uh, oils and watercolor? Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, watercolor, not really. I, w I really wanted to use it and always lean towards it when I was in college. Yeah. So my, my oil work, my professors felt like were stronger, and so they kind of were in pushing me pushing towards that. Pushing you towards that, yeah. It's rare, actually, my school, for people to use watercolor or inks in, like, when they were in their master's classes. But anyways. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. I was always, I'm always curious, like, because I didn't go to art school, so I was, like, curious what I missed out on. But that could just be like that school, you know? True. I think every art program is probably yeah. different. Yeah, no, that makes sense. My art program was very different. <laughs> well, 
Yeah, every day you, you're in an art program when you come to film, right, Keenan? Right, exactly. We should charge him for the education oh he's getting. My. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't mind that we're having a good time. Yeah. We're just enjoying our, ourselves, right? I'm Girl. having the best time. Yay. I like it. Right. I Gosh, like it. You really have to like step back, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like I really like the strokes that you got. Mine are Thank very you. thick, but I like I like to see how another artist interprets um, the same project. The same project. Yeah. Yes, and so it's really great. at home, like yours look different too. You know, we Ooh. give yep. you a template, and then you can run with it. Yeah. Last thing for the grasses, Sarah, is we're gonna hit it a little bit more, one more time with some neo colors. Yeah, I think they're on your they side. They are. I took them. Maybe. Here's okay. yellow. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of pick a couple places to add this. Had a few green. more strokes of yellow. Yellow and green? Yep. And I'm also gonna add a tiny bit of yellow to Man, that these crasses here. Okay. Okay. And then I might even add like a few little here and there. Just like like very few, right? Cause I'm telling myself kinda because I tend to go over. I love to I love mark making. Which means making marks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that what that means? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. And then a couple touches of green. And I think that's good for the foreground. You could go in there again black, but I Can like I it. Can I put How it in it? like my water and my sky and sure. stuff? I, so I want to add one more layer to the sky. Just okay. add a few okay. more things. And then I will add some yellow for sure to my sky. So let's use the round brush now. Okay. Yeah, and we're gonna do some, we're just gonna kind of come in here and add a few more like mm -hmm. touches of whites and like kind of almost like gray colors. So I'm gonna start with white. Let's just, let's just actually put a glob on here. Okay. And then I'm going to um, first start with some warm colors. And so I'm, where is our, let's add some more yellow. Just want a few more kind of pops. All right, so we've got some yellow, and I'm gonna add a little bit of red to that just to kind of warm it up here. That was a lot of red. I'm just gonna roll with it. Go for it. <laughs> roll with it. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my brush, my round brush, by the tip, and then I'm gonna be making these motions going Whoa, this way. Oh, okay? okay, okay. And I'm gonna very lightly kind of drag it. You know. Keenan's heard me say this, but in order to paint loose, you gotta let go of something, right? I think you gotta let go kind of mm -hmm. of the control, which can be hard and scary for some. Um, I agree. Yeah. I have heard you say that. <laughs> but it's good, it's fun. And then now's the time where you just kind of add a few more strokes of, I'm gonna add a little more of a saturated yellow and because mm -hmm. I think it needs a little bit more few more strokes of that. You know, I keep mixing it here and then I put it on my page and I realize that I need a little bit more saturation in order for it to show. Yeah, like compared to the, your painting as opposed to the white, the white background. The yes. So, oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna add a few little strokes in there and then push the yellow a little farther. You can do whatever you want on this. I mean, I, we've seen skies in so many different colors. Have you even seen a green sky? Have you seen a green sky? Yes. Nope. <laughs> That's oh. a thing here. <laughs> yeah. It it's is. scary. Yeah. Yeah. It usually that means, means run for cover. That, yeah. means, <laughs> that means find a basement. <laughs> Go to your nearest shelter. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I love this golden. This I know. Golden, I'm like, yes, go, Lori. I'm going to take some of those. Yeah. Thank so you. Just, just tap it on there. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, okay, that is, that's what I wanted. And then I wanna, I wanna add some white to that to add a couple of little spots that are a little lighter. The golden is golden. <laughs> nice, Keenan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so once you get to a point where you're like, okay, this is good, we are gonna add, um, I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of white. Like I'm gonna do like a little bit of a blue gray, and we can even if, if this is still yeah I think we can still reactivate that. So like a you can add a little phthalo, a little blue, a little black, and some white. All right, and then I am going to 
Also using the round brush, I have round number eight, and also holding the end, mm -hmm. I'm going to now pull horizontally. Okay. And just do a few, actually I'm going to go on a curve. I'm just going to do a few little strokes of clouds that are kind of look like they're kind of weaving it through this stuff. And actually I want a little bit more I love that part. Saturation. That's what I was waiting for. Is it? Yep. <laughs> There we go, a little more saturated there. Yeah, so just a, f a few strokes. And you know, you can, I'm gonna kind of work it into this part just a little, the blue, this blue that I'm using. Just to kind of move it through. Sometimes I like to use my fingers and just kind of spread it if I want it to kind of not be quite as harsh of a line. I like it. And then let's add, I'm going to go with, so I want to make kind of a gray, so I'm going to add a little bit more black to this. There we go. And I'm going to just add a few, stark, a few um, little touches of gray. I want, I think if we do a dry brush, I think that's what I like better. Yeah. Do you do a lot of dry brush? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. You know, one thing I haven't done a lot of is animals. Oh, really? Yeah. They're fun. I like flowers a lot. I tend to gravitate toward those. Okay. Yeah, the frog one was the first animal one, really, for the That frog first is project. so cute. So cute. Uh, thanks, Aya. It was inspired by my girls who wanted me to paint them a frog because they would catch frogs outside. Little froggy friends. Okay, look at our painting and I think if, unless there's anything else you want to add, I think we're good. Look at that. Yay. So good. So nice. I like how much vibrance that you have here. I feel like there's a nice contrast between that and like the grasses. I, the mid -ground. I feel like your mid-ground has great like depth. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. my layers got a little bit too even in value right here. Oh, that no. seems I think a little. It still works. See, I can see stripes there. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a second. I'm like, I need to go back and add a tiny bit more. Wait, no. now we're just gonna. Mess so, over. <laughs> this is where Switch. we, you know, it's hard to stop. Maybe sometimes it's hard. To, yeah. You could totally keep going if you want to make more of these. If you did create the wetland sunrise, post and share. We'd love to see it. I want to see it. Yes, and you can share it on our Facebook group at. Let's Make Art Acrylic, or on our Instagram at Let's Go Make Art. So thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Thanks for being here. Lori, you did great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Keenan. Okay. Hi. I was just in the recording.